So the technique that I use is an old metal casting technique that's been around for thousands of years. This is how I do it. Basically, it's, it's the metal casting technique, but it's a little bit different. And what I do is I press positive into sand that has moisture and clay into it. And then I pack the sand around the form to create a mold. Now, this is different than plaster casting. Um, in that it's more three-dimensional. There's many differences, but this is a stamp and a pour technique. Um, so you press your shape in the sand, and then you take it out, and then I add my colors, which is ground up glass. I just lay it right on the mold, right on the sand. Um, and prior to actually adding the colors, I burn the sand so that it acts as like a release between the molten glass and the sand so it doesn't stick. And then pour the molten glass into that hole with a ladle. It's 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit when I pour it. When glass is blown, it's about 2,000 degrees as well. It might be a little hotter when you pour it because you want it to really flow. And um, it's very beautiful to watch like from roughly 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit to roughly 1,000. And at 1,000, it's semi-molten. It's, it's not going to lose its shape. And I'll take it out of the sand, and I'm going to put it in a cooling oven, which slowly cools it back to room temperature. And that's the difference between the metal casting in simplicity and the glass casting, is that you have to slowly cool it, or else it would crack. If you just left it in the sand, like metal casting, it would just crack has to be cooled. My work takes about two weeks to cool back to room temperature. And here you see we're putting it in this cooling oven with the gloves and the... So back to the rough glass concept. Um, for me, just a little bit about my background is I've always been a sculptor and a painter. And I was actually never really interested in glass at all. It kind of scared me. Um, we had a, a facility at Tulane, which is where I went to school. And, um, you know, I thought glass equals glass blowing, and I'm not interested in, in perfecting a craft skill. That's what I thought glass was in the 80s. And so I kind of put it off until junior year, and I happened to go to a school that has one of the pioneers of the art glass movement, and he's still there. His name is Gene Koss. And he and I think in the exact same way that glass is just another material to communicate an idea. I want you to use glass as a sculptural material, and I'm going to show you all the different ways you can do that. And um, so he was taught by Bertil um, in 1985, and he taught me in 1988 by chance. It was just kind of a fluke that I was there right at the time that this technique was being developed that you need enough technical expertise to create an emotional impact. I think that's very important that you don't get too overly um, concerned with, with the technique. Um, I mean, I think it's very important to have technical expertise, and I'm not saying that, but I think that, you know, for me, I want the work to um, create an emotional impact on the viewer, and I think that that's very important. Um, and then I like to hear what people see in the work. For me, that completes the piece. I'm putting out 50%, but I feel that, you know, I really enjoy hearing what people see in the work because I don't think it can really ever be the same as what, what I intended. For me, because. art can be defined as the quality of communication. So I try to, when I look at work, what is it, does it communicate anything to me or, you know, so that's, for me, the work that I like. Um, has some sort of an emotional impact and communicates so something. This is a, a, a latest uh, body of work that I've done with the butterflies. That's a, a lovely um, spiritual image of transformation, and I just thought it was a, a lovely. Um, you know, I do a lot of, of abstract work. But you'll see here I'm, I'm represented by a. a Asian art gallery, so a lot of the work you'll see at the show is, is Asian influenced. Um, I, I love uh, cultures that communicate boldly, simply very strong forms and shapes. And, um, this is a 
Han Dynasty uh, bronze bell. Visible. 